Hi all, this video is a lesson for kindergarten, first, and second grade. And we are focusing on striking. There will be three parts of the video segmented. We'll have a kindergarten spot, first grade, and second grade. The information, the timestamps, will be in the information below. But before we get to that, we need some supplies. And unfortunately, we're not at school, so we have to use the supplies we have here at home. Now, I don't live in a house, I live in an apartment, and here's what I strangled up. I've got a ping pong paddle, and I could use a ping pong ball. I have a wiffle ball, and I could even use that. I have a tennis ball and a racquetball. I also have a pickleball racket, a tennis racket, which is a lot bigger, and a tennis ball. And I even have a racket ball, a racket ball racket. And I could even use those. Now, there's a real chance you don't have any of that supplies, but I bet you do have one of these. So, if you don't have a racket, at all, or a paddle of any kind, all you need is a spoon and a crumpled up piece of paper. Here's your ball. I know this isn't officially a spoon, but we're going to call it a spoon. And what we'll use, uh, we'll use those to, to strike. If you want an upgraded version, I have a spoon duct taped to cardboard. So. You might have to ask your parents for some help. First, ask them to see if they have any kind of paddle or racket. And if they don't, maybe you have a spoon, a wooden spoon, or even a metal spoon. And I know you got some pieces of paper at home somewhere. Now, you can use, I bet your parents will allow you to use this inside. Maybe they won't let you use these balls inside because you could break something or maybe they don't want you swinging this around in your house right totally get that so if it's a nice day out beautiful day out or you have a basement that you can go in and they don't care about what I'm really saying is ask your parents before doing this activity you'll need a paddle and a ball one of the options over here so we're off now I need you to find your grade level in this video so either kindergarten, first grade, or second grade. Let's have some. Hi kindergarten, let's get striking. So you have your paddle, you've asked your parents where you can do this at in the house or in your yard if you're lucky enough to have one. And you have a paddle and you have a ball. But before we can strike, we gotta talk about our cues. Remember cues is how we perform a task. So uh, remember like, for throwing, we had step with our opposite foot. With kicking, we stepped with our opposite foot and then kicked, right? So those are our cues for those tasks. Our cues for striking are as follows. We have watch the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. When you hit the ball, you have to keep your eye on the ball. If you're looking away from the ball, you're not gonna know where it's at. So we have to keep our eye on the ball. Say, eye on the ball. I can't hear you. Say, eye on the ball. I think you're whispering. Say, eye on the ball. Thanks. So we have to keep our eye on the ball. Next, we're not going to throw the ball in the air. If we throw the ball in the air, it's going to be harder to hit the ball. So the first thing we're going to try to do is just drop the ball. So we have eye on the ball, and we have drop the ball. Right. So all we're going to do is drop the ball. I'm not going to throw it in the air, we're just going to drop the ball. Next, how we hold our paddle is going to make it easier or harder for us. This part of the paddle is where I'm going to hit the ball with. And if the closer my hand is to the part where I hit the ball, the easier it is. The farther away my hand is from that spot, spot the harder it's going to be. So you can play with that. You can be closer, middle, farther away. It's up to you. So our first activity we're going to do is we're going to practice. We're going to practice, say it with me, eye on the ball. 
thank you. Drop the ball, drop the ball, okay, thank you. And then strike the ball. So I'm gonna look at the ball, drop the ball, strike the ball. Yes! Eye on the ball, drop the ball, strike the ball. That's all I want you to do. I want you to take four minutes and just have fun. Fun dropping the ball, attempting to strike the ball. Eye on the ball, drop the ball, strike the ball. I'm gonna put four minutes up on the screen. Go. I love your effort. I hope you had some successful attempts. If you didn't, here's some things that people can mess up on. When they try to swing and hit a ball, sometimes they move their wrist. So when you swing at it, if you look, if you swing at it, you 
you don't have as much of a chance if you roll your wrist. Instead, try to keep your wrist, your wrist stiff. Lock it, and don't let it don't let it move around. Because then, when you try to hit it, you have more space to make contact with the ball. If you roll, you might miss it. So put your wrist back, lock it in place, and you should have a better chance. Other problem could be, this might be too small, right? This is not a very big space to hit a ball. So this is when, if you haven't had success, Maybe ask your parents for ideas. So this one, right, I made this. It took me less than a minute to make. And what I did was just, in case the parents want to see, a spoon, cut out some cardboard, duct tape. And then it gives you a much bigger surface to hit the ball, right? So that's a great option. Or if you're using paper, I would not say to use this with any of the other balls. Here's just a lid that um, we have at my house. And I all I have to do is hold on to it. I would hold on to it between my thumb and my index finger. Keep my, in, my wrist in place still. You don't want to be rolling around. But now we have a bigger object to hit it with. It still works fine. Our second activity we're going to do is now we're going to use different kind of forces. Now I'm not talking Star Wars here. I'm talking about pressure. How much force we put on something. So, we have done this in class. I'd like you to say light force. Light force. Can you say light force? Yeah, let's whisper it. Say, whisper light. Awesome. Now, a little louder, say medium. Way to go. Then, we want strong force, right? And I don't, don't scream at your house, but say it louder. Say strong on, in three. Three, two, one. Strong force. Yes. So what we're going to do for the next four minutes is I want you to go from light, medium, to strong. So I am going to have to chase down one ball because I only have two of them. And we have three different kind of forces. So light force, we barely want to hit the ball. We want to barely hit the ball. Here we go, light force. Right? It didn't go very far. Medium force, we're going to swing a little harder medium force. In our strong force, we get to really wind up and hit the ball as hard as we want. This one's sometimes harder to control. You might not even be able to hit the ball as well as if you do medium force or light force, but it sometimes is a lot more fun to hit a ball as hard as you can. Here we go. So that was strong force. Now it's your turn. You're going to do light force medium force, strong force. You have four minutes. Go.
All right, kindergarten, this is our last activity. And I added one more piece of equipment that you're gonna need, and it's a target. I chose a pillow. So you see my pillow way down there, right? It doesn't have to be a pillow. It just wants to be something that you're not gonna break. So if you're lucky enough to go out, be able to go outside with your parents' permission, then you can use Anything you want. Maybe there's a slide, a tree, a trash can lid. Whatever you're using, you just don't want to break it. I know a tennis ball does a lot more damage than this piece of paper does. So ask permission from your parents on what target you can use. So here's what it's going to look like. right? You, you can be as close as you want to the target or farther away. But I want you to be successful. So maybe start close and then after you hit the target a few times, you can keep backing up. I think this is a good time to remind yourselves what the cues are. Eye on the ball. Eye on the ball. Drop the ball. Make contact with the ball. Right? And we and we found out that two things really can mess up our swing. One is if we're rolling, have a loose wrist, right? So we want to lock it in place so that when we swing, we get as much space from the head of the pedal as possible. Or maybe you just want it needed to get a bigger target, right? If you were using this and you weren't hitting the ball, then maybe you needed to upgrade to a bigger space to hit with. Let me show you what this activity might look like. Now, I'm staying on my knees so I can stay in shot of the camera, but you can do the standing, you can do the sitting on your knees. It doesn't matter. It's as long as we use the cues. Eye on the ball, drop the ball, strike the ball. Maybe I want to be this close. And then, after I hit it a few times, I might back up. Maybe try to hit it from here. Nice. And then maybe I'll go even back farther. Ooh. You can do this activity as long as you want or as short as you want. This is activity I just want you to have fun. Focus on the cues. Maybe you do it for four minutes. Maybe you do it for ten minutes. It doesn't matter. Just have fun with it. And it was really great to talk to you guys this week. See you next week. All right, I'm combining first and second grade together. On Seesaw, you both classes will have different sets of questions. You can answer those typing if you want. It'd be a great chance to practice your typing skills. You could do it through audio or a video. I am not gonna be able to write back to each and every person because I'm gonna be, I am with all the schools right now but I will make sure I hit that like button so you know that I know that you did this activity. Let's get started. So you have your paddle that you have asked your parents to use, right? You might have a tennis racket, um, any kind of, maybe a ping pong paddle, maybe just a spoon. Maybe you have this contraption here. I also, if, for instance, you, the only option you have is like a spatula like this or a, or a wooden spoon or even a smaller spoon. And as you do this activity, you find out that it is too difficult for you to make contact with the ball. Maybe if you're using the paper, you could ask to use a Tupperware or get creative. That something that is bigger that you can use. All right. So either you're outside with your parents' permission or you're inside like me, and you're using a paper ball or whatever ball that you're able to use and your parents have given you permission. First activity. All we're gonna do is practice hitting the ball first. Right? You can use any force you want. Strong force, light force, I just wanna make you have make contact with the ball. I'm not gonna introduce the cues first. I'm gonna do that right before our second activity. 
I just want you to experiment with the ball. You're gonna have four minutes, and I just want you to practice hitting this ball. Maybe you throw it in the air, maybe you drop it. I don't know. Your turn. Four minutes. Go. Second activity. Before we do our second activity, we need to talk about our cues, how to perform the skill. The first thing we want to do is keep our eye on the ball. Whether we are just striking it one time or trying to bounce it multiple times, we need to keep our eye on the ball. If we don't focus and keep our attention on the ball, if we're not, our chances of keeping it in the air become less and less. Second, when we start the ball, to so start whether we strike it or 
hit it multiple times, we want to drop the ball. The more you throw it in the air, the more chances you're put, putting out that you can mess up. So we want to get a clean start by just dropping or just dropping. So we've got eye on the ball, drop the ball. The third cue, we want to make contact with the ball. The way we're going to do that is we're going to have a stiff wrist. So our wrist, we don't want it to be moving back and forth because that puts more movement and chances for messing up. So what we want to do is have a stiff wrist, lock it. Because what will happen is, pretend that I went to hit this, but I rolled my wrist like this. So I'm moving my wrist over. I might totally miss, I might miss the ball altogether. But if I keep my wrist locked and I don't let it move, I have all this space that I have a chance to hit the ball with. I was checking to see if I had another ball in my pocket. Second activity. I want to see if you, how many times you can keep the ball in the air without hitting the ground. Oop, that was just one. Oh. Right, so these paper ones are going to be, they make it as stiff as you possibly can. But it's going to be harder because it's not smooth as compared to a ping pong ball and a paddle, right? Right, it's smooth, so there might be less chances it goes anywhere. Or a tennis racket, right? So if you're lucky enough to have a tennis racket in your house and a tennis ball, this is more difficult. The farther your hand away from, we're gonna call this the head of the racket or the paddle, the harder it is to be under control. So the, it's heavier here when my hand is all the way from the head of the racket. It's gonna be easier the closer my hand is to it. Easier, harder. Yeah, four minutes. Give it a try.
Our third activity before we get to try to hit the ball with some distance is called freestyle. Freestyle is when you get different ways of trying to keep the ball in the air or even bounce off the ground. So what we've done so far is just trying to keep the ball up in the air, right? So if you have a tennis racket or a racquetball, wiffle ball, and you're just trying to keep it in the air. After you feel pretty successful, maybe you get 10 or more or five, or if you just want to try something out, try it out. Maybe you turn your racket over, your wrist over, and you try to keep it in the air. Maybe you try to even bounce it off the ground. Maybe you get a little crazy and you flip your tennis racket or paddle over. The truth is, each ball on each paddle can do different things. This ball is going to be harder because it's not a smooth, round shape. This t uh, the paper ball with my paddle. But maybe you can figure out something cool you can do, right? Maybe, since this has two spots, you try to hit both ends. That's really hard. A wiffle ball might have a different way to hit the ball than a tennis ball. Same thing with a ping pong ball and a racquetball or whatever ball you're using. So you get four minutes, freestyle, have fun, get creative.
This is our last activity. It's called striking golf. You'll need one more piece of equipment, and that'll be your target. And the target is behind me. It's the pillow. And you're going to see how many times it takes you to hit your ball and to hit your target. So let me show you what it might look like. I might start here. Ooh, I hit it. So I, I would call that a hole in one. So it took me one time. But pretend I missed it. Pretend I miss. Well, I'll show you if I miss it. Say I miss it. What I'm gonna have to do is that's one. And then I stand behind it, pick it up, hit the ball one more time. And so it took me two times. Once this clip is over, I'll show you one or two more holes that I made in my own house. And you can do as many holes as you want. This might be a really good time to ask your, your family to go along with you. But only spend as much time as you're able because I know you have lots of other works to do at school as well. So have fun. All right, this is my first shot. Right, I've hit the ball one time. This is my second shot. You want to try to stay behind the ball? I missed it. I'm going to try to get it in three. So I've shot two times. I've, um, this next one will be my third shot. Third shot. And I hit it. So have fun. Create your own holes. See ya.